Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we get to the weather, let's check out the latest leaderboard for the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest. You gain points by photographing your catch when you're fishing from your kayak. At the end of the season, the angler with the most points wins it. The Old Town Sportsman Autopilot Kayak, valued at over $4,000. For all the details, visit thefisherman.com. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin has been releasing big fish lately out of Rockaway Inlet, but does he have a good weather report for the upcoming weekend? Let's see. What do you have, Rich? Thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, meteorologist uh, Rich Von Olin here, News 12 Long Island Weather Center. Let's check the weekend forecast, see what we got going on. All right, here's our weather maps here. Water temps, yeah, they've been coming up finally after a very chilly spring. We got some, uh, you know, 60s now, a few 50s across uh, the east and out towards uh, Nantucket Shoals. And wave heights Saturday going to be the pick of the weekend. Uh, you got more of a northeast to variable wind. So I think a one to two foot, uh, two to foot roll will do it. Two to four there coming in uh, off the coast. And then it starts to get a little lumpier perhaps later uh, Sunday with more of an easterly breeze. But overall, the weekend didn't look too bad. I think uh, for the tournaments, everything going on shouldn't be too bad. There'll be some cloud cover, though. I think a little bit of shower action probably on Sunday, most of Saturday, just mostly cloudy, dry. Again, the winds start to go a little east-northeast. This will be for Sunday, so probably the, uh, you know, the, the less comfortable day Sunday. I think Saturday a little better. And there's the high tides, again, north shore, south shore and across the east end for Saturday. So it looks like uh, not bad this weekend, pretty decent. Uh, the fishing is picking up, so things looking better. Have a great weekend, be safe, enjoy. Tim, back to you. Remember to check out News 12 before heading out on the water. Now, with all the fluke news, we have Fred Galafaro. Yeah, Tim, uh, fluke fishing seems much improved, especially along the South Shore and all the way out to Montauk. Uh, in fact, uh, some really good sized flukes, some real doormats being caught. Jamaica Bay produced that 15-pounder uh, last week for Anthony Monteforte. We uh, showed you that last week. This week on Monday, uh, also in Jamaica Bay, inside the bay, Jerry Ron from Bernie's Bait and Tackle. He clicked with a 14-pound doormat. Uh, he was using a uh, Todd Candy bucktail tipped with a 6-inch nuclear chicken gulp. So some really big flatties coming out of Jamaica Bay right now. and. Uh, it's really all along the South Shore, getting good reports, uh, a lot of shorts, but uh, some nice fish mixed in. Also on Monday, Emma Van Guan, uh, she was fishing the Freeport area, also with gulp. She nailed a 10-pound doormat. Same day, Samantha Leach, uh, Lease, uh, she was aboard the Captree Fish Finder, and she had a 7.6-pounder, along with another nice fish. Uh, at the other end of the island, Savio Mizzi, our art uh, contributor. He's, you know, he's fishing pretty much every day that it's fishable and he said the fluke fishing out there is much improved. Again, a lot of shorts but a lot of nice fish mixed in. He's also catching a lot of bass and most of them also shorts and he's basically bucktailing whether it's fluke or bass. With the fluke it's bucktails and gulp. And uh, Carl Moeller, he decked a 9.4 pound fluke on the charter boat top hook out in Montauk. So uh, really some good fluke fishing going on. At the end of this video, check out Fred's tips on catching fluke from the dock. Montauk is heating up like this 10.2 pound fluke caught by Tim Schneider and this nice slot fish trolled up on the O Brother by Herb Dollhouse. With more from Montauk, we have Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thank you, Tim. Well, greetings everybody from Montauk. Everything's starting to pick up out here. All the party boats are sailing. Um, with all of the social distancing and the lack of passengers, it's a great time to get on a party boat because there's plenty of space, lots of uh, opportunity to enjoy yourself. The Viking fleet reports their porgy boat is doing really good on the porgies and their half day fluke boat is coming up with, you know, keepers and some bigger fish as well, as well as an occasional blue fish and um, some mixed bag stuff like sea bass that gets released. As far as uh, the fluke report, the Elizabeth II, uh, Paulie Bruno had his daughters out on Sunday. They had three really nice fluke, one up to 23 inches. On Monday, he had a party and Matt Meehan caught his personal best, which was a 10 and a quarter pound fluke. The kids fluke tournament, the Montauk kids fluke tournament out here is heating up. The kids are really starting to fish. Trevor Meehan is still in first place. Finn O'Rourke is now taken second and third with a pair of fish that he caught on Sunday. And Cooper Meehan is still in fourth. In regards to the light tackle and fly fishing, 
there's plenty of surface action with striped bass, and when they're not cooperating, there's plenty of boo fish to pick from. So if they're not gator size, they're a nice schooly sized fish to keep you occupied. So every day you don't know what you're gonna get, but it's pretty consistent fishing out here. Come on out to Montauk and enjoy some fishing and have a great weekend. From the North Fork, let's check in with Sebastian Head. Thanks, Tim. The fishing's been really great up here on the North Fork. In the Peconic Bays, it's a little bit tougher to get at the striped bass because of the monster bluefish. I caught this 16 pound bluefish while trailing a diamond jig last week. As far as the bass go, they've been hitting at dawn and dusk, mostly on bucktails and diamond jigs when you can get to them, if you can get past the bluefish. Plum gut has been producing, so it's that time of the year. Uh, June is big fish month, so go out and get them. I've heard of some tuna being caught offshore. I've heard of some fluke being caught in the keeper range. And the weak fish run is in full effect. People are catching them while fishing for porgies, while fishing for bluefish, and of course, while fishing for weak fish. So tight lines, everybody, and uh, stay safe out there. The East End beaches are heating up. Cade Keys weighed and released this 20 pound bass caught between Shinnecock and Mariches. For more from the East End, here's Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everybody. Well, the fishing certainly came alive this week, uh, just actually a couple of days ago. I've been fishing off the beach with not much luck, tail blues, some gator blues, mostly around the inlet, a lot more cocktails than, than gators. Uh, yesterday, I was down at the beach, and the old dependable one-ounce bucktail got about five schoolie bass and a 17-inch fluke. Seen a lot of big bunker pods uh, off of Mariches, off of Southampton. There's been a ton of whales around. So this June full moon really seemed to bring everything to light. The back bait bite is off a little bit, pretty much just a night bite. Uh, but there are a decent amount of fluke catches from the shore, also out in Hampton Reef. And in the Baconics, the porgy bite is still pretty strong. So uh, this is definitely going to be the weekend to get out there and uh, catch them up and have some fun. From the North Shore, it's time for Hawaiian Dan. Thanks, Tim. Aloha! I'm Hawaiian Dan of TalkFishTV.com, reporting for the Fisherman Magazine, where I gotta say there are fish here. They vary in sizes, I'd say somewhere between 24 and 27 inches, just under keeper size. A bunch of schoolies in town feeding on some really, really small bait. They are sure are fat, so they're feeding a lot. Looks like they might be killies, some rain bait, maybe some peanut bunker in town. I know that there's some bigger bunker in town as well, the adult size bunker, maybe some shad moving around. Wasn't able to find any really big fish, nothing in the keeper size, but still plenty of fun out there. Plenty of reasons to get off those couches, grab those rods and get out there and fish. Remember to practice your social distancing, be safe, spread love, not war, and until next time, I'm your favorite man, Hawaiian Dan, signing out. Now back to you, Tim, aloha. The South Shore has what seems to be endless bunker schools with some bass and whales feeding on them. Jack Albanese sent in this cool video of a whale crashing through a school of bunker. With more from the Fire Island area, here's Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Tim, Fire Island Fishing Report. Uh, some big striped bass around. Not a tremendous amount, but you know, I hooked one up, had a mid 30s on Monday, had another one on, broke it off on Tuesday all on the bunker pods, and I know people are catching also on the mojos and bunker spoons. So uh, there's striped bass to be caught. Also uh, in the 25 mile range, there's bluefin tuna, 20 to 40 pounds with a couple of bigger ones once in a while mixed in. And uh, one of my friends who was trolling for bluefin tuna hooked on a spreader bar, a 250 pound mako and uh, released it at the boat. So, um, Anyway, there's a lot of things going on. Fluke fishing is okay. It's not great. I think it'll pick up a little bit over the next couple of weeks. The water gets a little bit warmer. And most of the big fish are coming out of the back bay areas rather than the inlet area. So that's it for this week, Tim. Talk to you next week. Be good. A very happy Anthony D. Domenico caught his first striped bass aboard the Laura Lee last Sunday night. He and his friend Tom used Al Gag paddle tails for this nice keeper and a bunch of schoolies. He grilled it up to make fish tacos and po' boys on Monday and fish scampi on Tuesday. Sounds delicious. You've seen it in the news. Fishing in the outdoors has become more popular during the pandemic and Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. Check out a Pro powered by Suzuki. Low rates make it the perfect time to buy. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. Uh, some decent fluke action around the area, around Captree, uh, local beaches, and on the piers. We actually had a four-pounder off the pier, which was pretty cool. Uh, weak fish are in the area now. 
Uh, we heard up to nine pounds, which was pretty awesome on uh, boats nearby. Uh, striped bass and blues are still around, especially at night on the pier. Uh, under the lights are doing very well. So get fishing, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. And if you need us, we're here at the shop. Bruce Morbido had a great day on the Konequat River. He and his friend Joe had 18 fat brookies from 14 inches to 15 inches and a nice 20 inch rainbow. They said that the size 16 pheasant tail nymph unweighted behind a size 10 bead was the hot fly. From Jones Beach Bait and Tackle, we have a new correspondent and that is Matt Bauer. Hey Tim, it's Matt Bauer reporting from Jones Beach Bait and Tackle. There have been plenty of fish around Starting out with stripers, there's been some small schooly bass coming up off the piers, mainly on bass assassins and bucktails. We're hoping that the bigger fish will move in here shortly, but there has also been some bluefish mixed in with the bass, and also anglers have been finding schools of bluefish in the surf and in the bays. The action has been very spotty, and it seems like the bigger bluefish skipped our area. For the fluke season, the fluke season has started out fairly slow, although there have been some fish coming up, and we're hoping that this, the action will pick up as the season goes on. Also, there have been weak fish caught in the area. I heard of a 28 inch being caught, which is pretty awesome. Uh, West End is still closed for coronavirus testing. As this whole uh, pandemic slows down, we're hoping that the um, West End will open again so that we can fish the jetty. And in the next two weeks, Jones Beach Bait and Tackle will be open. But for now, you guys can get everything you need from Capture Bait and Tackle. Thanks, Tim. Back to you. From River Bay Outfitters, let's check in with Paul McCain. Hello, Tim. All during this coronavirus, I've been concentrating on what's local, local waters. Uh, and I'm amazed, I'm still amazed how much I'm finding. On Long Island, with fresh and salt, we got a credible amount. Plus, we're not that far from New England, so it's, it's been really good. Monday, I went out with my wife, uh, Julie, over at uh, Stump Pond. Crappies, bluegills, pumpkin seeds, bass, all on top water. Terrific fishing. Uh, and we had a terrific time. A good friend of mine, and as many of you know him as Kenny the Hat, he's been going out social distancing by himself. But because of that, he cannot, he can't get a photograph. So he's taking a picture of his foot next to his fish. He's catching a ton of carp in the local ponds. I mean, every time, every day he's catching fish. Uh, so from now on, I'm calling him Left Foot Kenny. No more Kenny the Hat. Uh, in Saltwater, my son went out to a, a North, North Shore Harbor with a bunch of his posse, his posse, and uh, he got him hooked, man. They, they're catching stripers and they caught a few bluefish. It's been really a good, good season so far. But the key is to get out. If you want any more information, please feel free to call me. I'll be more than happy to help you. I want people out there to fish. So until next week, tie lines, everybody. Big spoons are catching big fish like this one that Rob Roberts reeled in. This fish that was released fell to a secret spoon near Deb's Inlet. When I think of Deb's Inlet, I think of Joey Leggio. Hey Tim, what's going on? Report out of Deb's Inlet is that the big bass are here and lots of them. You get out there, you're gonna find these fish. You're gonna work areas in that 50 to 55 foot range, just shy of the line. The fish are hitting spoons. Uh, white's been the popular one. My buddy Timmy was out there, Timmy Ihop. He had a whole bunch of fish, and most of these fish are going 30 to 40 pounds, with some even greater than that. His two biggest in the last two days, he had a 51 inch and a 52 inch fish. So those are some pretty impressive fish. Just make sure when you arrive them, either you drop them in head first or drag them for a little. I'm a big fan of dropping them in head first and giving that quick burst of oxygen. I feel that works best instead of dragging them, but to eat your own. Uh, today I was out, went out 2.30, took out Christopher, Joellen, uh, Vincent and Joe on Joe's Grady and we connected with five bass, landing three of them, all fell to the spoon and the biggest one we had was probably about 49 to 50 inch fish but lean one, not a real big cow or else I probably wouldn't push in that magic number but still a very impressive fish and the other two guesstimated and we're in that uh, 35 pound range and one just over 40 pounds. Um, trying to make some sort of bracket to weigh these fish. I really don't want to hook them in their lip and uh, damage fish. I'm trying to see if I can do like some bridal thing with a scale and hang it from the rod rack like you see behind me. Uh, the bottom fishing is still really good. I had Sean out with um, his two buddies and uh, 
lots and lots of life, lots of sea bass. A shame we can't keep them. There's some real beautiful sea bass to be caught. Uh, we had codfish and some blackfish. No porgies yet though, which is shocking. I thought maybe we would see some, but unfortunately not. Uh, that's really it. There's a fluke bite in the bay. I've seen the guys all fluking. Didn't really get many reports, but they're definitely out there. Uh, and that's basically it for Debs. Get out there, get those spoons out, get those mojos out, and you know, get, now's your perfect chance, a perfect opportunity to get a true trophy. And just like, be careful releasing it. And uh, that's it. Take a photo. And what do they say? CPR, catch, photo, release. So that's basically all we're doing right now because you're not really going to find a keeper out there because everything's over 35 inches. But hopefully, it'll change the rules to one over 36 like they did back many moons ago when the, and the, the uh, fishery did rebuild itself. So hopefully, it'll make some changes. And other than that, that's it, Timmy. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, buddy. Now let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Hey, thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So this last week, I started off in the backwaters of my local area, fishing my favorite dock lights. With around 2,500 size setups. This is my uh, Stratic 2500 for my Phoenix M1. It's an 8 to 20 pound test. Um, we paired that up with these guys over here, the Gulp, uh, excuse me, the Gulp Lugworms. The striped bass have really been beating these up in the lights. There's been small squid around, there's been spearing, those cinder worms are still staying, so it's working out. The size of the fish is not nearly as close to what I was seeing about a week and a half, two weeks ago, but there's still some fish around. Uh, they've been taking these guys too. This is a Kai Tech, I just have a swim bait hook bigger of a setup but that's generally what's been going on in the back now as far as the outside I was fishing with my friend Joey Leggio not too long ago and we were trolling some striped bass uh, if you've been paying attention there's some large fish being caught and we had one that was probably right up with there in the 40s and 50s but due to my talent I broke our outrider this is one of those real innovation ones the guys were nice enough to give me a uh, discount a new one but the fishing's great out there guys I hope you're enjoying yourselves and I'll catch you next week Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, has been fishing Flushing Bay on the end of the incoming tide. He said it was lock and load for three hours catching slotfish and schoolies. He also made a trip to Staten Island and found the blues. Now, let's check in with Luke Feeney from Sheep's Head Bay. Thank you, Tim. Hey folks, as the weather starts to get warmer with it getting well into the 90s this past week, the water temperatures are really starting to heat up and many fish are becoming way more active. To start, the fluking has been really solid in many areas such as drifting in the Coney Island Channel right off the tip of the pier, drifting in the two deep holes directly off Manhattan Beach, fishing in the shallower water inshore of the Coney Island Channel closer to the beach, as well as drifting off the Floyd Bennett corner before making the turn towards the North Channel to go further back into the bay. I'm a guy who usually pushes nothing but the gulp, but the guys who have been using baits such as spearing, bluefish strips, and sea robin strips have been seeing a lot more action as far as shorts with the occasional keeper while the gulp continues to produce the larger fish, but fewer small fish in the mix, so the choice is really up to you. If you are alright with sacrificing quantity for quality and the chance at a nice trophy fluke, stick with the gulp. That's exactly what Bernie's bait and tackle employee Jerry Ron did this past week, where he caught this 14 pound fluke locally on a gulp grub. The bass fishing is continuing to be solid as many shift from trolling mojos to snagging and dropping within bunker schools. Many boats have been fishing in the bunker schools at the head of Ambrose, as well as the bunker schools that have moved and closer off the rockways, even within the blocks of the 120s in the rockways. Using a heavier spinning rod and a weighted treble to snag bunker and leave it within the school is a great method to attract big fish because those bunkers send out signals and now is the perfect time to do so. Big bluefish have also been in the mix while doing this. The mojos are still working as well. Many are having great success trolling them through or in the vicinity of these bunker schools. And that's it for this week. Be sure to get out there, and until next time, tight lines. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat and Kayak Clash contest. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please, support our correspondents by visiting their website and social media pages. See you right here at the Fisherman dot com and YouTube for the latest fishing reports. Now stay tuned for Fred Galifaro's Dockside Fluke Tips. Now, something I want to share for you, especially if you don't have your own boat or if you just can't swing a party boat ride at this time. Uh, I've been I've been fishing the docks uh, like pretty much every evening, depending on the weather and the wind. 
but some of the docks in my local area, I live in Isla, but I really don't think it matters. I think it's more the technique. And I've been doing very well. Uh, I've been averaging like three fluke, including quite a few keepers um, over the past few weeks. Um, and the docks are no secret. I mean, a lot of guys now figured out, you know, there's good bass fishing on the docks. You get bluefish coming into the docks along the mainland of the South Shore. Uh, but the fluke fishing's really surprised me. Um, it's really <laughs> uh, time I'm doing much better than some of the guys going out in the boats. So uh, very short time frame, like an hour pretty much most evenings. Uh, Sunday night, for example, that, that was the best evening I've had, but in an hour I had five keepers. Uh, I'm sorry, five total. I landed two with keepers, 19 and 20 inches, which I did throw back. I also dropped the fish between four and five pounds trying to lift them up on the dock because the net was in my truck which was in the shop. Um, so just to show you the potential, but uh, the whole key to this fishing, and I think it's probably been available to us for a long time, just nobody's really capitalized on it. And as I said, I think it's the potential is there for a lot of other docks all along the South Shore. Um, first of all, what I've discovered is one fish I did fillet last week stuffed with shrimp, grass shrimp. Now, every one of these fish I've caught have been right next to the dock up along the bulkhead. I'm not casting. Sometimes I'll cast parallel to the dock, parallel to the bulkhead, but basically I'm stripping out eight feet of line, dropping it straight down, just jigging it up and down, walking slowly along the dock, cover some space. And, uh, you know, some nights, you know, like Sunday night, I've caught five, but uh, probably had you know, another eight, maybe ten, ten hits. So again, it's really surprised me, the quality of the fishing. But uh, if you want to give it a try, all you need is a light spinning rod. You know, I'm using a little six foot rod with a ten pound test braid, a half ounce jig head. And uh, I think one of, the, one of the main keys to it has been these fish bites. Uh, we gave them out at the boat shows and sports shows over the winter as a premium for subscribers. Uh, I started using them last August. They sent me some samples and that's when I started catching these fluke and weak fish in good numbers on the docks and it's just really made a, made a world of difference. Unfortunately, uh, fish bites are tough to find. I've got a lot of people asking me and looking for them. Um, they're, it's not, they're not around in very many shops. If you can't get hold of them, you can buy them direct. But just go to fishbites.com and uh, the ones you want, or the ones I've been using, I shouldn't say the ones you want because there's probably other styles that work just as good, but you don't change, you know, when you got something hot going, you don't switch. I've been using the five inch Dirty Boxers, which is a curly tail grub, and I've been using primarily the pink color. Um, so said if you want to give it a try stay right next to the bulkheads those fish are feeding on the shrimp up against the bulkhead the fish I filleted was stuffed with them and uh, give it a shot I think you know, you're gonna be surprised